So, good evening everybody and um, <coughs> welcome tonight. So, um, for tonight's talk, which I just, just sort of pulled out of my monk's hat, so to speak, is the seven uh, enlightenment factors. And um, it's something that you've, um, most of you are quite f familiar with and lies within the, uh, the, say, the full framework. You know, we have, uh, say, like 37 uh, enlightenment factors which cover the full spectrum of the uh, Buddha's uh, system of training and in order for you to be uh, successful uh, uh, in, um, in Buddhist practice and uh, successful on the spiritual path that you have to apply all of those um, to some degree you know as you work from the beginners to the intermediate to the um, uh, advanced level and uh, as uh, uh, the vast majority of you are aware, this is a very uh, gradual path. And it's a, a gradual path which involves um, a level of s virtually skillfulness at um, every turn. Because with, uh, especially with uh, mind-body um, cultivation, you continually need to be, say, like watching over uh, especially your mind. And, um, you know, the ca ones, say, like internal characteristics of mind, one's thoughts, feelings, moods, behaviours, uh, you know, and what's actually going on around you uh, in the world between yourself and other people, social and um, community uh, issues because you, know, you are like a uh, small component uh, of the whole and uh, your world is uh, projected from, from you, you know, from uh, internally, your mind base, your world comes from you and moves out and uh, affects others and affects the things uh, around you. So um, with these uh, seven uh, enlightenment uh, factors, uh, we have uh, the, the first one, mindfulness. And this quality of mindfulness that's bandied about to uh, a great, a great degree, what does it actually mean in practical terms and how actually mindfulness say feels within the mind body complex is is this quality of um, virtually present moment awareness as as, <clears throat> as you as your mindfulness develops and sharpens over time you're you're moving your uh, your mental and physical awareness closer and closer towards the uh, the present moment because the present moment um, is that which contains that um, that deep, deep, deeper sense of peace, the, the sharpness, the clarity, the energy. So you know, the, the closer you move back towards that very sharp, bright uh, focus, the more successful you tend to be uh, on the on the, uh, with, especially with spiritual practice. Because um, if we can't even get um, mindfulness. Uh, together as a as a skill, uh, it's more difficult to actually build the other factors on that because you, you're looking at like you know within this particular um, section of the teaching, you're looking at say like like layers within the practice, and it's like say for example, you've got the say the ground floor which is mindfulness, then you're building your you know your first floor, second floor, third floor um, uh, above that, and um, you know the these conditions that you develop within yourself um, internally, they, uh, they have a cause and effect uh, principle. You know, they are intrinsically linked. And uh, in reality, you can't have one uh, uh, without the other. You're looking at a cause and effect uh, principle, like, so like the links in a, in a chain. And um, so one can't really exist um, without the other when you're looking at the, say, the full expanse of this uh, uh, particular, say, teaching format. So um, naturally, uh, mindfulness is applied within the uh, four major um, areas, you know, within the, uh, the scope of um, the uh, contemplation of um, uh, the body and um, uh, feelings that's both uh, you know feelings within the uh, say the mind complex feelings within the body 
and the third um, section is um, like mental states, actually full, say full mood states, full um, say mind states, and all and every and all the energies uh, which are contained within them. And the fourth area is the uh, contemplation of uh, dhammas, or the say contemplation of uh, say. Um, Reality-based principles. It can be, it can be, um, it can be a contemplation of the the Buddha's teaching. It could be a contemplation of um, specifically. You know, if you if you really if you're really looking at it on a fine level, um, you know, because essentially the Buddha's teaching is the most comprehensive spiritual teaching that you will um, come across. So you know, when you focus there. You're focusing in a sense of totality. You know, when you're investigating, you're investigating within a sense of totality. And um, but certainly, you can you can you could be invest investigating um, different principles within Christianity, um, uh, Hinduism. Uh, you could be studying um, even say like the natural world uh, to a degree. You know, some people, depending on the quality of their parami, they have a like an underlying um, disposition they have an underlying skill to investigate in certain areas uh, maybe more areas uh, more specific areas um, than others because we all have a um, a mix of uh, past karma we have uh, possibly some intermediate to very deep experience even, even things like the natural world even things like say physics um, um, other aspects of um, even things, uh, so even possibly meditation, things like casino practice, and and um, everybody has a, a certain underlying skill which may be tapped or untapped, and um, they can actually focus that uh, within the sphere of um, contemplation and basically sharpen one's uh, wisdom practice. So the um, uh, within the uh, uh, investigation of the body, you're looking at investigation of say bodily concepts or processes, naturally the um, the breath, you know, that's the um, uh, the main meditation we do and it's usually supported by loving kindness, you know, the and compassion, you know, these two are very, very conducive, they have uh, many, many benefits um, it's not only, you know, this sense of, uh, this generation of say underlying, say positivity energy you know there's kindness there's compassion there there's um there's patience there's empathy there's there's um care you know there's almost like a dozen um factors there and it's and it's the kind of energy this loving kindness compassion energy it's a it's the kind of energy which can encompass your whole personality it um it affects your whole outlook the way you you look uh, at the world, and I mean, just even 60 seconds of this practice can um, improve your uh, the quality of yourself as a person. It can make you a more a tolerant, less irritable, less angry uh, person, a person who can really um, so can, like connect with others in a, in a maybe in a more in a more a small, like more smooth, refined fashion. And um, you know, having the, having the this kind of uh, softness and warmth, and um, uh, under underlying, say, positivity, this broad-ranging positivity, which makes it much easier for you to um, uh, to deal with and get along with um, uh, other people. And that's the uh, uh, say the uh, the user-friendly. And meditations we use as a, as a support for the breath, just as basic, like basic tools. And the uh, the other key concepts within that body framework is the um, uh, the contemplation of the four postures. So whatever posture that you find your physical body in at any moment of the day, <coughs> you need to be the. Uh, let's see, the principle is you need to be aware of where your body is at at that particular moment in time. So 
if you even if you have just the 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 bare awareness the the actual bare sense of your physical body as an as an entity um, you can actually you can feel the feelings um, in, in in the physical body you know on a, on a regular basis on a on a on a um, in in a, in a general sense, it doesn't have to be super sharp, like you know, like a laser beam type of um, type of uh, say focus. But you can, in normal circumstances, you can feel your physical body at almost any time uh, of the day, unless you you are incredibly uh, distracted. And um, the so, for example, usually senior teachers they will they will say that um, you keep your awareness within the pra the parameters of your uh, of the skin level, and um, if you have your your uh, awareness internal to that that degree, um, where the awareness is either inside the body or to the level of the skin, then you've got mindfulness uh, uh, established to a uh, uh, an effective degree in a, in a general sense. And um, so naturally, the four postures will cover the. Uh, the traditional format of um, uh, uh, like uh, so walking, standing, sitting, lying down, you know, whichever way your body is disposed. And the, uh, the, more, the more sort of uh, say tough cookie practices within that format are the um, say the, 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 the body meditation practices, uh, say like the, uh, the contemplation. Uh, of the body, so like the the changeability, the unsatisfactoriness, the emptiness, the voidness principle of of this, um, especially of the the physical body in a sense, because we for all of us, uh, including the monastics, this physical body is a major source, a major um, emphasis in our life. It, there's just so many energies, forces, just you know. Um, uh, caught up and, and directed towards this physical body, we spend so much time, so much, so much energy, so much care uh, on it. And uh, naturally, it's, it's our vehicle that we carry with us on um, a day-to-day -day business. It's our, you know, it's, it's our vehicle that we present um, to the world. It's what what people see. It's what they feel. It's the it's this you know this visual impression that we give other people uh, constantly, and it affects the way they uh, perceive us. And uh, you know we all understand the basic principles behind, um, say, like body language and and um, bodily, you know, bodily energy and um, the way we project ourselves and whatnot. So it's a it's a key um, principle to 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 know what your body's actually um, doing and how it how it um, how the bodily energy like changes, even in relation with different people. How your personal energy changes, how your personal behaviour changes as you move. From person to person, you know, it gives you uh, a sense of, of where you're at, the way your mind mind works in this in this sphere. And um, so um, we have the uh, yeah. So these these uh, more say I would say more like you you can you can take it in a you can take it to a refined format. But the way they explained it within the sutta format, it's more of a, like a course um, basis. So this uh, investigate and get investigation of um, Bodily um, components, you know, within say the four, uh, within these sort of the three characteristics, within the four element practice of say like earth, water, wind, and um, fire. You know, earth being the the the, the firmness, the, um, the 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 density, the the hard element of the body, it's something that you're aware of. You can actually sense as you're moving around when you when you're actually sitting, when you when you're physically working. You know, it's that which is resistant, firm. And um, it's something you know you can you can feel quite it's quite obvious, and um, the uh, the the water element is that which is um, within the bodily process, which is like fluid and f and flowing. You know, in any kind of uh, watery composition within within uh, within the body. And then we have um, the element air element. Naturally, the breath. Uh, any any um, uh, say. Uh, movement of say winds air through the through the bodily process through the limbs and um, we have the, the the fire amount which is tied in with the process of say metabolism giant and digestion the, the the radiant heat that we feel um, you know from the uh, from the from the physical body the, the heat that helps to 
um, uh, to support and uh, accelerate physical processes, you know, like chemical processes in the body. So um, some these those particular say tough cookie practices. Um, it's not something I usually. The monastics they they usually do these to um, say like a small uh, degree because being like celibate people, um, it's actually quite necessary, and uh, most people don't survive in the monastic life if this energy is very very forceful. This is one. This one's like the major killer for uh, monks and nuns. So it's good to develop um, a, a minimum degree of skill. Uh, in this area, you know, basically just to um, protect one's mind from one's, uh, say, personal energies um, in this area. And um, sometimes the, the lay disciples may find it useful just to, to select a certain practice um, or even a mantra formulation, which is something I do a lot, which is very user-friendly and it's not too forceful and it's not um, too coarse and... Uh, even with the lay disciples, it doesn't, it doesn't put people off, it doesn't make them feel any sense of uh, disgust. You can use this very mild formulation like, uh, say like the, the breath is, um, uh, is air element, or say like, say, like uh, say bodily sweat is uh, water element, or you can choose anything within that format um, in a mild sense, and when you see very, say, very strong sensual desire arise, you switch over to these, say, body contemplation mantras and you can cool the mind very, very quickly. Uh, people who like to, who really like to do the loving-kindness, especially the first three meditations within the Brahma-Vihara system, um, which are very, very positive energetic meditations, but they do, they do provoke um, lust to varying degrees. They, they can provoke, uh, say, very... For the lay community, it's not a, uh, it's not even a problem. You know, it's a very, very warm, you know, very intimate, um, you know, feelings of, of um, attachment, desire, you know, which is just, uh, you know, really quite perfect for people uh, uh, in relationships and um, people who want to, Im you know, improve their, you know, the energy, their personal energy um, between people, and it's something I always, always recommend for people, especially those first three, you know, you, you can use them, uh, the, you know, those, uh, the loving kindness, compassion, uh, sympathetic joy, which is based, uh, which is an antidote, antidote which is based in um, balancing and counteracting jealousy. But they, they all, they have a, a range of um, effects. They, they generate certain feelings, certain qualities that you can feel within yourself. And you, within this especially those first three, first three, you have an ability to generate any kind of emotion, uh, any kind of mind state, which will actually support you in a day-to-day -day life. This is something I, I always, you know, I, I teach on a regular basis, but it's got a lot, uh, a lot going for it. And for people who want to generate personal happiness in a very, very short space of time, within seven days, you know, easily you see a change. Uh, within yourself and, and the people around you will notice that and um, you know 60 seconds even like two minutes um, uh, is enough you know my, my brother um, you know, he did sort of get into the medita uh, into the loving kindness meditation uh, excessively but he found it um, he found it was a little bit too soft he was working with a lot of um, young sort of rough, uh, rough young guys and didn't work so well but 60 seconds is um, with sustained attention uh, which gives that 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 meditation more strength. It gives it more more oomph, more more firmness. Even though it's it's a um, it's got a degree of softness. It's got, it's it's the with sustained attention with those three specific um, meditations, you get this um, uh, firmness. This uh, like uh, like it's like the uh, I wouldn't call it the steel fist and the velvet glove, but it's it's got a, a, a greater degree of energy and uh, strength behind it. So, um, with the remaining meditations within the uh, bodily practice, we also have the uh, cemetery meditations, which are completely irrelevant for you people. You don't have to, uh, uh, don't even really need to touch on those uh, at all, unless you're feeling incredibly adventurous. And um, 
So the uh, the second the second parameter is uh, say like feeling uh, within the body. So that's feeling within the, say the mind body uh, complex, and uh, naturally um, feelings uh, but in the body both um, say. Um, like both painful, pleasant, neutral sensations. So the the broad range of anything you feel through this uh, this physical body and within the the mind, like just pure um, st like states of of like almost like simple states of like emotion. You know where you can actually identify, um, uh, uh, say, like a specific feeling within the the three categories. And the uh, the the third. Um, uh, say parameter there is is um, like states of mind, and we're, we're talking about sort of comprehensive states of mind, not and and all the say the the, the complications which would, which go with them, all the issues, the the um, the underlying uh, business which may be tied in with a particular mood. Because naturally, say for example, um, we may have something come up between ourselves and another person, and we have the we may have the raw emotion there. But also we have the complexity. You know, we have um, we have cause and effect principles there. We have we have uh, additional feelings. We have um, maybe complicated uh, psychological um, you know thinking process going on. And so that mind state it takes in like the big picture. You know, it's, it encompasses everything you feel within that particular uh, mood uh, because there could be like a half a dozen factors there that you may need to uh, or you could actually uh, look into to get a full comprehension of, of what what actually makes that state uh, up and the uh, fourth category is uh, investigation of dhammas investigation of the truth principle and this one is very like wide ranging so that can cover any any aspect of your life, both internally, externally, either within, say, on the mental or physical level, um, anything that you that you see, that you experience in the world, uh, within uh, one's culture, one's society, and you, whatever that truth principle may be, you 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 in, you investigate that. You can investigate this specifically within the parameters of dharma. We take the, um, the Buddhist teaching. You can take a so, for example, this is a common experience with people that um, you have a personal experience, and then there will be a trigger, and then you, especially for of, of those of you who read Dhamma on a regular basis, or listen to talks, or you study the um, uh, the Sutta, Sutta Nikaya. Um, the uh, the uh, original um, Buddhist teaching in translation, and when you absorb that Dharma knowledge, and it lays at a deeper level in your mind, when you have your personal experiences on a day-to-day -day basis, you you ha you have like a, a trigger, and then you have like a linking process where the personal experience it links in with that underlying. Dhamma that you've absorbed previously, so and then when that comes up, that trigger, you you switch and then you 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 investigate that experience within that particular point that the the Buddha taught or maybe a, um, a senior teacher um, uh, or monastic uh, from any tradition, and um, the the reason because you you find within you know this this very specific focus within the, the Dhamma framework instead of like investigating just in a very general sort of hodgepodge type of fashion you know we use this kind of laser beam you know we you know what, what whatever the, the, the Buddha was talking about say like um, it could be something like um, say the four uh, let me see say like the four the eight loka Dhammas the four in you know, the four these like four pairs of, of um, worldly forces or um, say conditions and um, things like like you know, this is just very very 
basic stuff, but you can you, you can investigate it to quite a refined level. Something like gain and loss is, is something that we see um, in our personal life in you know, in the world on a uh, in a, in a regular in on a regular uh, basis, and you know as the vast majority of people understand that it's impossible. You know, especially in the in the view of the changeability of phenomena on uh, within this world of ours, which is which is a fact that no one can deny or argue uh, against. That gain and loss, it has to accord uh, with that principle. Whatever forces and energies um, are at work, um, that principle of a nature will touch everything. In, uh, in our lives, so absolutely impossible that any person will be in a position where they where they just gain and gain and gain. It's just it's just impossible. No matter how smart, no matter how skillful the contacts, how sharp, how cunning, uh, uh, the underlying faculties they have, um, they will have to basically like lose out part company. They will they will have to give up. Uh, say personal requisites, personal control over material possessions, over over people, um, over forces and energies in in their life. They absolutely uh, impossible to uh, for an individual to control what's uh, going on around them. And um, even though myself, I'm at the top of the line on a um, uh, irregular basis, I don't make much effort to actually control anybody uh, in the monastery and um, because I mean Ajahn Brahm is a classic he he's incredibly incredibly spacious and very really kind uh, compassionate and his, his wisdom really really strong wisdom parami and um, he understands people very very deeply he understands their defilements quite deeply and he finds that that you know just guiding people gently being a role model um, and tends tends to be the most successful way to um, train people. You know, you, you you can you just you make you make people aware. You give them the framework for practice. You guide them gently if they if they go off. You know, you give them advice um, and whatnot. You know, you you treat them gently and kindly, and um, you basically don't you know you don't put the put the screws on them. You don't put the pressure on. Um, Excessively, you know, you 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 do protect you protect them from say like uh, if they if they go beyond the range and they start to maybe become coarse, then you you know you basically have to stop them at that that point. But um, you find uh, for myself, we've got a very very good community dynamics and things. People are getting along really well. Things go smoothly. People are practicing the works, the the work and the the duties are. Uh, taken care of, and it's and it's it's almost like this kind of fluid, these fluid, di uh, almost like a, a fluid um, dynamics. Uh, not getting sort of too complicated, but um, it it tends to be um, a very successful uh, approach. And um, other communities I see where the abbots are very, uh, not to say that um, it doesn't have some benefits sometimes, but the abbots are very forceful, and strict. It um, it tends to provoke people. It antagonises them. It you know it ticks them off. It annoys them, and um, you know people get aversion. They get dislike. They get resentment and uh, whatnot. But naturally, there's always, there may always be a degree of say loyalty, respect, faith. Yeah, you know, there's 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 many 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 different components. The way we feel about senior monks. The way we feel about our friends and companions in the um, religious life, whether it's monastic or lay. So, but that sense of that underlying sense of, um, say, balance, harmony, you know, what's um, what's actually good for oneself and um, other people, you know, we've got to sort of look at the uh, the big picture, not not one's uh, like personal, um, so like views, opinions, you know, it's not like what you know what I want to. Uh, achieve, you know, what I expect other people to uh, to do, you know, further down the line, or uh, people who are, uh, are visiting for a short term. 
So the with the, with this 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 aspect of of mindfulness as a um, as a uh, foundation uh, that um, naturally you 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 follow on with your uh, investigation of uh, of um, the four main uh, areas and when you uh, say investigate uh, in line. Uh, in accordance um, with the Dhamma principle. That mental energy uh, uh, becomes stirred up and set rolling uh, in the mind. And that's one thing that people notice both in spiritual practice and uh, even non-Buddhist people in worldly life that when you investigate both internally and externally what's going on uh, in the world, it's a natural condition that from that um, applied and sustained uh, attention, that energy um, uh, becomes workable, it, you know, it, it, it arises and is set in motion. And within um, the, uh, say, five um, uh, factors, the five factors for the development of um, uh, both tranquil tranquility, meditation and the five um, major factors for the, so the attainment of um, the four enlightenment stages, so the five um, controlling, or so the five injuries, five controlling facult faculties, uh, you know, energy plays a, um, uh, a prominent part and for people who uh, have success in meditation, they are people who can uh, gen like generate mental energy and actually focus that energy uh, into uh, the practice, and uh, that eventually leads on to um, like tranquility and stillness, you know, in stages. So, when you are uh, seeing your personal life on a day-to-day -day, um, experiential basis, um, whenever something new comes up, uh, um, or even uh, uh, personal experience, which is could have could have come up like a hundred times, but may be the only thing which arises in the mind. It's still worth uh, contem contempl you know contemplating and investigating, because that Dharma principle still holds true. You know, through applied and sustained application of the mind, that um, that energy uh, will arise, and. Um, with the that experience of um, energy uh, comes a sense of um, say like sharpness, both like mental speed as the energy increases in the mind, mind speed uh, increases to a degree, and um, you have a uh, like a sharpening of uh, thought processes, uh, thought processes, an increased ability to uh, say to analyze and discriminate and investigate. Um, uh, phenomena and um, the even say like even increased uh, say like like reaction uh, reaction speed uh, intellectual function overall and um, so with this this um, uh, this energy that we see arising in the practice you you know you know that you're getting energy um, established. That 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 particular factor, uh, that number three factor, is actually starting to become firm, and is becoming workable. Is uh, that joy starts to arise? That that the sense of like rapturous feeling, which people um, uh, experience, uh, arising up in the physical body. It, it can be it. it like rapturous feeling uh, can rise up on, on say like within five levels, you know, from say a more uh, say coarse to refined level, and uh, a common experience people has is this energy it rises up from the from the uh, the the tanti and the the uh, say the chi point, you know, like uh, just below the belly button. That's a, a very very common point where that 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 energy moves up. And it moves up the spinal cord, um, say through the, uh, like virtually through the, to the chakras. Anyone familiar with um, Kundalini meditation will um, 
have a um, understanding of that, um, because that you know they have there's a basis in Kundalini practice where people are, um, are harnessing, they're developing harnessing that energy and they're moving it up, and they're moving it up to the um, up to the crown, up to the top um, chakra chakra till the um, the Kundalini is uh, released, and they can get some very very uh, interesting. Uh, personal uh, experiences and uh, religious experiences. So, with this this rapturous um, feeling rising up, you know, especially like rising up the the spine in the beginning, and it's a, a feeling as it develops, it radiates out through uh, the physical body, out through the limbs, and um, it uh, increases, uh, say, like in t in intensity and increases uh, in refinement uh, over time and um, the so for example in the um, the beginning stage you will have uh, say like a like a like a coarse electric current like like yeah like like pulses of energy like moving through the physical body to the extremities and over time as the as the tranquility within your meditation uh, starts to deepen, as your mind uh, refines down over time, the physical sensations in your body refine accordingly, you know, because mind and body is linked uh, together. And um, what happens is that as the, as the meditation deepens, refined, then that sense of rapturous feeling, that sense of pity uh, refines down. And you move through five stages of uh, this rapturous feeling, and the the energy behind this this rapture, it, like it increases. Um, it's the type of uh, energy which can um, basically it can run for uh, sixty seconds, and uh, when you really get it moving, and this is tied in with chi, with chi kung, you can have this energy running for like. Oh, like two, three, five hours um, at a at a stretch. You know, this is quite quite um, uh, you know quite um, a reasonable expectation over time. It's something that many people have um, experienced. It's it's like it's like a it's almost like an opening up of the of the energy centers in the body, and they just get this full flow experience which some people may may quite um, you know realistically accord with a almost like a like a like a like a religious experience there's just so much so much energy there so much delight so much um, so much happiness because the way the way you know when you've got real energy running in the physical body and it and it reaches your mind it, it's it um, you've you've got like energy there for 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 joy for for, for happiness and um, you know any, anyone who's been meditating for some time you know they will touch on this as the practice um, deepens over over the years but it's quite an encouraging um, uh, experience you know it's, it's very it's a very very pleasant and um, you know it's 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 a, it's, um, it's it's like it's rewarding and it's, it's there's a degree of fulfillment there because if you actually see results in your practice um, over time, it encourages you and it keeps you going because with people whose meditation is really flat, you know, it's really, it's hard going, you know, they, they feel that they don't see results um, over time, which is not uh, true in any real sense because if you're applying the, um, the foundation principles of practice, um, but you still feel that the practice is quite tricky, it's not it's not difficult to, to get to get calm. You may feel that the mind is not, you know, very stable in balance, no matter which way you work it. But it, you know, it has to come together over time. Um, that the as long as you keep applying the mind in the right direction, you have to get uh, good results. You know, a, a lot of this is tied in with people's personal parami. Acham Brom uh, was was having. Um, uh, we were having a cup of tea there uh, two nights ago, and uh, there was one of the meditators on uh, the retreat schedule at Jana Grove, and uh, this gentleman had been on. Re this is the second day on retreat, and he just had an incredible 
experience which which accorded with the the first jhana meditation and um i mean this is you know we are t talking really you know that is an incredibly that's a very profound state of meditation and um you know so this man has some very <laughs> He's got some amazing um, personal parami <laughs> behind him, and uh, it's something I could, couldn't sort of, and I couldn't believe like straight off the cuff. But um, you know, I'm not going to sort of, um, you know, sort of tut tut the point. You know, if, if this is the case, I mean, all, I mean, you know, great great guns to the man. I hope, um, I hope you can do this on a, on a regular basis because this state, especially these these levels of samadhi, upachara samadhi, and first jhana up to the fourth jhana. These, these are the states that you need to aim for just in a very gentle way. You keep your practice in balance. You have your, your, your samatha, your tranquil, tranquility practice. You have your wisdom um, side of the practice. You know, you work with those two together. You keep them in balance as the months and the years go by. And um, you do the best with uh, what you've got. People are so different, the quality of the parami is so different. Some people have been practicing for several lifetimes. For some people it may be their first life on the Buddhist path. So um, we have to really need to avoid to compare ourselves with other people. It always comes up, but it's something you investigate, you reflect on. It's just it, it's a, another area, another aspect of the mind which uh, comes up in the practice. And everybody goes through this, whether it's the lay uh, or... Uh, practitioners or the um, uh, monastics, you know, looking, comparing ourselves with um, other people in uh, spiritual practice, you know, on, on many, many, not only spiritual practice, but personal characteristics and, and whatnot. So this, this energy, this rapture, it moves through uh, the five stages that, that that energy becomes more refined. Uh, more, say, subtle over time and eventually, so for example, when you reach the, uh, the, fifth, the fifth level of uh, rapturous feeling, then you really get a sense of what, say, say Piti Sukha starts to feel. You know, you, you reach that fifth fifth level, and you can get a sense for uh, for what um, yeah, like say yeah, like pity and sukha together as two factors together, because sukha sukha in itself, true sukha that, that incredibly refined happiness, and we're not just talking about any old happiness. We're not talking about say for example anybody who's used. Um, Used heroin, or or used, I mean, I mean, you know, say the best uh, class of amphetamines you have ever been able to get your hands on. Um, you know, this that that bliss that you touch on with the pity sukha. I mean, you know, n those the, none of those drugs will touch that. It's just absolute rubbish by comparison, and um, so. You you really you're really looking at true happiness, incredible happiness when you when you when you reach that point, that 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 pity that you see at the beginning stages, or that's not to be sniffed at. You know, it, it's still good meditation. It's still encouraging. Um, you know, it, it it's got um, uh, underlying uh, sense of joy, and then as that refines down to the fifth level, you touch that that pity sukha. And then you start to see real refinement of mind, and at that that point where that pity sukha starts to manifest, that refinement of mind really starts to uh, to uh, to be generated. That the the mind in itself, the the mental factors which make up that state, they start to come together. You know, you, you can you can feel this sense of like unification. The way you say that the senior teachers explain it, a sense of of you know of of um, coming together, oneness, unification, and the sense of firmness and the energy um, increases. That that sense of bliss intensifies, and um, for people who've uh, 
who actually have, say, the, not, the light nimitta in samadhi practice, you, you see a composite of those factors um, at that point. So, for example, if anybody explains that state to, um, uh, say, a chambrom or, uh, say, a junior or senior teacher who's, who's, uh, who's touched that state, um, the factors are very, very clear. There's no confusion whatsoever uh, in that state. It's, it's, it's virtually, virtually identical for, I mean, virtually all people. It's, it's a, you're moving towards a pure mental experience and it's not completely different from person to person. Those very, very specific factors and energies need to be there as that mind comes together. So you'll see maybe half a dozen, half a dozen principles, um, you know, within that that's, that mind state, as it unifies, and um, so the the energy in that state, those underlying factors, they increase in strength and um, stability. And for people who have the light nimitta, not everyone has that samadhi nimitta. Um, some people just have the have the the, the piti sukha. Some people have the piti sukha and the light nimitta, but there's a sense of of um, actually being drawn in uh, to the mind as, as the as the mind unifies. The person is actually drawn in uh, into a uh, sense of oneness. And on on the on the on the level of say thought, feeling, um, proliferation that the mind virtually, see even at the level of say upachara threshold, what they call say threshold uh, um, concentration, that um, one's thought processes, as you move through say the beginning through when the samadhi nimitta, um, uh, it, could be, it could be there in the mind sort of like on and off for shorter long periods of time, and it is possible for thought to arise um, in between, you know, in between the, uh, say, the experience when the samadhi nimitta is not um, established. But as soon as the light nimitta is um, uh, uh, established consistently, um, you know, pr pr the, the, the thinking process, proliferation in the mind, it, it, has to, it has to die away, it has to subside. Um, to a major degree, because you, you, you're moving, you're drawing your attention in from the five senses into the mind, uh, that pure mind experience. You're leaving your five sense world and its attachments uh, behind. And um, so that, that bliss, that light will, uh, will draw you uh, uh, inwards. Uh, internally, so the factors uh, they build, they increase, and the five, uh, say five factors for uh, the summit practice, the um, applied uh, attention, sustained attention, uh, pity, sukha, and one pointedness of mind. You know, they um, they uh, uh, be they uh, become more sustained. They increase in strength. As um, as the, uh, the the sense of peace in the mind increases, and um, so naturally the uh, that piti sukha uh, is the underlying cause for true samadhi, uh, say true samadhi, true tranquility uh, to to uh, arise. You know, to draw the mind you know, to this sense of of uh, oneness where uh, thought uh, comes to an end, you know. Uh, but, you know, say for example, you will have meditation masters who have a, uh, an ability, they can, they can switch back and forth. Uh, they can have the, say, the samadhi nimitta there in the mind's eye, and they can also investigate, they can investigate dhamma, um, quite, you know, quite profound, uh, say deep, uh, manner, but they can sus they they also have the the light, the energy. They also have that uh, pity sukha there. It's it's an it's an ability for people who've got 
um, like say mastery of the first chana at least, or mastery, especially mastery of the fourth chana, you can, you can do that. You can contemplate Dhamma when that, 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 um, that, that light, uh, that energy is there. But as soon as you, from what I've heard senior teachers say previously, as soon as you move from that intermediate to that high level within a Pachara Samadhi, the mind has to um, uh, shut down thought, you know, thought, a proliferation has to come to an end and then that mind becomes one and, and that experience is what the, um, say the, uh, the, um, say the Christians or the Muslims would call, um, they say their personal uh, experience of uh, God as a, uh, as a true religious, um, uh, exalted uh, religious experience. And then arising um, from that uh, samadhi, from that uh, refined uh, experience of samadhi where the five hindrances, the, these five major areas which are the, the obstacles to the wisdom practice they are temporarily suppressed uh, in that state. So as a, as a person rises from that very profound state of uh, meditation, withdraws back to their five sense world, there's still a very deep, profound, underlying sense of stillness and um, tranquility. And that, that, that underlying um, uh, peacefulness, really, I mean, very profound, deep state of mind. It is so so still that you have the when you when you look at yourself, you look at your mind, you look at the world around you. You see, like with the in a loose term, it's like the like the the eyes of a child. You you see everything in a pure form like it's, it's like a like a like a new experience like a classic line was like long Tui from uh nong kai has his monastery in thailand he's he, he was he was just chit chatting with the monks at the cup of tea and he was just looking around and he said he was just pointing pointing at things and he said yeah he said you you said you you young, you young guys he said he said everything everything you see it's just it's it's, it's, it's like it's all the old it's all the old stuff you know he said the um, you know your personal experience, the the stuff that, that that we see, the material possessions you have, he said you you just can't see them clearly. You you can't see them with the so that like the bright light of um, of that mind of that dumber mind, and um, that underlying state will give the mind power. Will give you an ability to really investigate to a very profound level. And for people to have that, to generate that and develop that level of wisdom practice uh, in the long term, uh, you've, got to, you've got to have that. You've got, you've got to have Upachara Samadhi and um, uh, the first jhana as a, as a minimum basis. And say the investigation of the three characteristics and um, you know, I double checked this with senior teachers in Thailand because this was a very, very crucial point for me because I spent like two years with um, senior teachers, enlightened teachers in um, Thailand as I was moving around and um, checked in with um, uh, enlightened masters. And um, you know, I, I just I questioned them and I questioned them in, in different ways. And the bottom line is, you if you have Upachara Samadhi and investigation of the three characteristics you know you you can realize dhamma in this life and if you're the kind of person who's who's basically who is really focused is not playing around um, even in lay life you know you may be a person living at home but you can really put forth energy you're not working for a living you don't have children you don't have uh, a partner you know you can you can you know you can practice like especially meditation like I mean, nothing less than three, four, five hours a day, every single day, that you have the potential to realize the Dhamma uh, in that life. 
with that level of uh, samadhi. But you've got to, that samadhi will only be a cause for wisdom to arise. And, um, you know, you've got to investigate in line with the, what, what the Buddha taught. And um, <clears throat> you do that long enough, you know, for the life, say, stories, life experience of the people who've broken through to uh, the um, enlightened stages, that um, path, consciousness, the nibbana element, that realistically you, <clears throat> you, you, can, you can do it in five to ten years. The, pe the people who, who just gave it everything they got, I mean, some of these people, you know, so like Achan Tongrat, you know, they, 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 some people thought he was absolutely crazy, he was so intense. I mean, the, the, the monks who stayed with him, I mean, the lay people who actually supported the monks on Bindabad, they thought he was absolutely, they thought he was mad. He was just so, so intense and he would, he would just, he would jump on the monks, you know, I mean, he'd be on their back for the, I mean, the slightest infractions, the smallest things. Um, he was just so disciplined, he was so incredibly tight. And um, the people who were able to basically survive with him, were able to stay with him for like even a couple of years. I mean, they just got incredible benefits, you know. They, there was nobody like him. I mean, even, he was even more fierce than, than uh, long, long, long time Ahabur. And, um, he, you know, the, uh, he, he just sharpened his monks to a razor's edge and very, very few of them could take it. And, and most of them like ran away, you know. So the ones that were left behind, you know, they were, they were really, really, you know, incredibly sharp practitioners, and um, they, you know, they really, they really knew what to, <laughs> what to do, and how to, how to practice in, uh, in the long run. So even if they, they left him at, at any point, these, these people were um, really, really on top of their, their game. So with that, that sense, that underlying uh, tranquility, and the that ongoing uh, investigation, that pure mind, uh, you know, the wisdom, the wisdom develops and it becomes, it becomes more, more sharp, more focused, more, um, more encompassing. As the, as the months and years go by, you, the, there's more, there's more um, clarity, there's more depth. You, you, you're, um, you actually see, uh, you see more, you understand to a, a deeper uh, level, you know, greater insights are arising as time goes by. And from that suppression of the five hindrances over time and that investigation of, uh, uh, of Dhamma or one's personal experience, that uh, the, the sense of equanimity, the sense of, of, um, of coolness, uh, detachment, uh, arises uh, in the mind because that is one of the effects of the wisdom practice that as you investigate, as you um, understand that real wisdom gives rise to letting go. And um, it doesn't mean that you won't be affected by um, say personal experience. People who have, but to a much lesser degree than say the average person, but that person will, you know, will have like an incredible happiness. But they will also have this kind of mental stability, um, where they can basically uh, they can handle almost anything. You can put them under stress, under pressure, and this will be the test of a, a person's um, uh, meditation. Um, you know, if they're in very demanding circumstances. Uh, circumstances which require high levels of of energy, and and the, you know the, you, you've got to see performance. The, you know you you see quality. You, you've got to see quality of teaching, sustained quality of teaching. The, the energy is there. The wisdom is there. Achim Brahm is a classic example. Any other teacher that you see at that level, with that level of meditation, those factors. That presentation, you know, you will, that will be very, very obvious, and um, that sense of equanimity, you know, that sense of that there'll be a sense of like 
um, the loving kindness, the compassion, and um, the Brahmi Viharas will be there. But there's this, and, the, and energy, but there's this um, sense of, of uh, detachment and uh, coolness which uh, gives, like, say, stability uh, to the mind uh, in the long term. So um, I'll finish uh, the uh, talk there and maybe uh, open the floor to any questions or inquiries or, or what not. Okay, so I don't think anybody wants to bring anything up. So Dennis, would you like to give your presentation, what you need to say? It's quite okay, you don't have to, you don't have to say anything. Yes, Eddie. Mm. Mm -hmm. So again, the most. Yeah. Of uh, which which one? Yeah, I mean, I mean, all of us. Yeah, we have to. Um, I mean, really, pay quite. I mean, it's it's all it's all part of the whole. It's part of the full system. Um, but the, the, the you know the, the key, I mean, say like key fa especially those first three, you know, the mindfulness, um, uh, in mindfulness investigation of, of um, states, you know, investigation of, of dhammas and and energy. That's something that we can see and we can generate quite um, without great difficulty. But the mindfulness and, and say like um, investigation uh, and energy, you you will see within the other the other smaller sections, the other. Um, so, like frameworks. Healing, healing. So, like, 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 yeah. So, so, so the specific, the specific word is is healing, isn't? Healing. healing. Yeah. So, in in that sense, when we when we talk about healing, it's like. It's in a sense of ba virtually being like free from the the underlying set of farments, the those obstructions um, in the mind. Because in order for, I mean, you, you can take it within a like within a um, so like a therapeutic context, a uh, so like a counselling context. But it, it's this, the the underlying say um, maybe maybe difficult emotional uh, say different emotions, grievances. Worries, concerns, anxieties. It's being being free from that. So, as you say, you know that that's where we see when we talk in the context of healing process actually taking place. Yeah, yeah, the seven, yeah, the seven factors. Yeah, well, any any major say um, uh, say chanting format that we do, where you're actually chanting the uh, the Buddhist teaching, or there's maybe specific formulas like loving kindness, um, the spreading of the four Brahma Viharas. They, um, you know, they're definitely not to be underestimated because if if the if being the translation of the the Buddhist words and the Buddhist the Buddha being the uh, the, mo the wisest, uh, most highly developed being in the universe, that those those chants, they they generate a, an energy. They, gener they 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 can virtually generate like insight. They can be triggers for for insight. They 
they help um, so like shape the mind to a degree they they shape like underlying energies in the mind anybody who gets into chanting it's something that they actually see for themselves over time like for myself I don't spend hours and hours chanting but I know people who who chant for at least a full hour every day and they find it very beneficial and and because it's the, the Buddha's words you know it's 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 got, it's got real it's got it's got power behind it Hmm. Yeah, well, it's certainly. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say, yeah, I mean, I'd, I would certainly agree that it that it works because whether the person is a yeah, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, the, the the principle still holds because we we're, we're talking about a, we're talking about a truth principle, which works regardless of circumstances, conditions. You know, it. it um, the effect is is still there if you apply it. <laughs> 